Hello everybody, today we're going to be changing out the, well we're going to be adding marine grease to the intermediate bearing housing. I'm going to show you how to do that and some interesting things that are not in the manual uh, maintenance schedule but are actually in the manual and that also contradict what the dealership says. So stay tuned. So in my 2021 Yamaha boat manual, AR195 is what I have, if you go to the maintenance schedule, which is somewhere through the 100 and it's in this care and storage section. Okay, so this chart. This chart that I saw, nowhere in here does it say to um, add grease to this intermediate gear housing, which I've heard from some of you guys that I need to do. So I looked into it. I also mess, it's not here on this maintenance chart. I also sent a text message to the dealership that I got the boat from. Lubricate. And, oh, here it is right here. Intermediate housing lubricate at 100 hours or every 100 hours. It doesn't say it's not here after 10 hours or anything, but check this out. All right, so here are the sections where you want to grease and lubricate. You've got your um, throttle cable. This is in the engine compartment. A couple places out here are these pivot joints back by the jet drive out the back. And then here we go, bearing housing. Grease the bearing housing through the grease nipple, which I'll show you that in a second. Fill the grease slowly and carefully because it can damage the, how the hose and joints. The first service should be done after 10 hours or one month by a Yamaha boat dealer. So it says 10 hours there, but here on this chart, I mean, what the heck? It says at 100 hours that we just looked at. So the grease capacity is 33 to 35 cc's, which is a little over one ounce. And then after the first service, do it every 100 hours. It says to have the dealership do it, but I'm gonna do this very slowly. And that's what we're gonna jump into. There's this little nipple, and it has a hose that goes down to the intermediate bearing housing. It's my understanding that older models of the boat or some other models of the boats don't have the hose and you have to really get down in there, but here we go. So the parts that I'm gonna be, well, the products, this is Stay Lube Marine Grease. This has great reviews, but most of the um, packages that I saw were leaking and had some kind of oil in here. And some of the reviews said that it does break down. This was one that had not broken down, so hopefully I got a good batch. I also got, these are three ounces, those are tiny. I also got this, I got this from Harbor Freight, three ounce mini grease gun kit with cartridge. So the, this, uh, this tube screws in here and goes out through here and you can just kind of pump this. And I also got some Lucas Marine Grease. I'm probably going to take that back because this also had good reviews. People swear by it. Also works great on the um, the boat trailer hubs. And I have a bigger grease gun, but it uses just a regular like automotive grease. And I wanted to get something separate, so this will be my dedicated boat greaser. And the other one's full size, so I'll definitely be able to tell the difference. But yeah, let's jump on in. And I think this actually came with a tube of grease, but I'll just take that out. So here's my grease. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. It looks okay, so it's this kind of light blue color. So I'm gonna go ahead and use one of those. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my my new grease gun that's dedicated for the boat. Amazon has frustration free packaging with their shipping. Harbor Freight has frustration full packaging <laughs> for their tools. And if you're not careful, you'll cut yourself. I've cut myself with this plastic crap before and yeah. It looks like it just has a regular size fitting there. Something I wanted to mention, this is the grease gun. 40 strokes is half an ounce. So if I need, according to this, one, one and a tenth to one and two tenths basically. So that's gonna be, to get to one, it's gonna be 80. And then to get to another tenth, it's gonna be another four. So I'm gonna need 84 to 88 pumps once this is starting to pump out. Now if this is where a full size grease gun, I probably only need like a few or maybe 10 at the most, but um, 84 to 88, that'll be easy to remember. I was born in 84, and I stopped making Fieros in 88. <laughs> Anyways. So I'm gonna take the cap off, and the seal off. 
I'm gonna do what I can to not spill this, not get it on anything. Better idea would be to do this outside the boat. But I'm already up in here, I'm already rolling. I've trimmed my fingernails, so I don't have much fingernails to work with here. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut off this foil. I do have some paper towels handy. And of course, I dripped some on the carpet already. It did wipe up easily, which is both a good thing and a bad thing. I don't think it should be liquid. As liquid as it is, this only goes in one way. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out all the way. This has a little rib on it, so it can't go in this way. Putting it in like so. Spinning it as I go. Couldn't get it all the way in, but that's all right. I'm gonna see if I can just kind of jam it in here. Without sending grease everywhere. I think what I'll do is I'm gonna pull back on the handle, push down, there we go. That got it all the way in. Tighten that down. This goes through there like so. I'm gonna push this in, or at least that, push it in. And give it some bumps until we start getting some grease out of here. There we go. Oh yeah, look at that. That looks good to me. This is in all the way. I'm gonna go ahead and show you where this goes on the boat and we'll get working on it. So this is the back of the boat and this is the engine compartment. I'm gonna go ahead and lift this up. There's that beautiful supercharged Yamaha motor. And I'm gonna cut and then show you where this is at. So if we're looking over here to the back of the engine, This is it right here. We've got this little rubber cap that comes off. You just pull that up and it exposes a grease fitting. And then, sorry, let's try this again. This has a tube on it. As you can see it moving down there. And it goes down into the housing down there. So that's what we're actually greasing and some of these boats don't have that tube but as you can see right here this tube is is loose, very floppy. As that When that fills up with grease it's not going to be so floppy. So we're going to go ahead and pump in our 80 to 88 pumps after we hook it up right there and hopefully we'll fill it up. I've got my paper towels handy. I'm just going to go ahead and push this on. Okay, it's on. Now I'm going to go ahead and start pumping. One, two. I don't see any leaks anywhere. Eighteen, nineteen. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. It is starting to splooge out a little bit through there. 33, 34. Okay. Okay. That's 70. 71. 80. 
I can tell the, the hose isn't flopping around like it was. It's not firm. That was 88. Oh, and that is full now. I'll show you what the hose looks like. Let me go ahead and remove that. So I did have a little bit splooging out there on the sides. That's the technical term. So I need to tighten that down before I pump again next time. That's all right. <laughs> we also had some splooging coming out of the top as well. So that also needs to be tightened down. That I assumed would have been, yeah, and here. So I didn't, I didn't tighten anything down enough, but I did pump some grease through there. And I'll show you what this hose looks like now. I've got some coming back out of the top. Gonna wipe that off. Put the cap back on. Okay, got that wiped. Putting that cap back on. And then this hose. See how it's not flopping around anymore? It's not super stiff, but it is firm. So that looks good down there. I don't see any leaks. So I'm going to consider this job done. Now all that's left is to repeat this process every 100 hours. Just a little bit is needed. Refer to your manual.